Welcome to this evening's feature presentation. This is a local history spotlight for the Osho Public Libraries. My name is Nicole Adams and I'm the local history and genealogy librarian for the library. Uh, currently our local history room where I usually work has been closed since March of last year. Um, so even when we were open to the public, my room that I usually sit in has been closed. It doesn't mean I haven't been getting a lot of history requests. Uh, I think with shutdown, everybody's been at home and um, kind of pondering different things about maybe the history of their home or looking into their family history or um, just Oshawa's history in general and contacting me. Um, and then I'm having to follow up on those requests. Um, so that's been uh, quite uh, busy uh, with people being at home. Um, and Oshawa Then and Now is something that came up a few months ago, I think, when I was presenting, um, or we had a pres presenter from the museum, and we were showing photographs of uh, the theatrical history of Oshawa. And someone said, well, it'd be great to see a lot of photos of before and after kind of thing, then and now. And there's so many photographs that we could cover. And a bulk of the photographs that I have included here are from either our collection, which is the Oshawa Library's History Collection, or the Thomas Boakley uh, Collection of Historical Photographs, which are at the Robert McLaughlin Gallery, which are right next to us. This is it's a building just across the street from us. Um, so I'm using those with their permission. Um, now, I will be mentioning as well that the before and after, the before pictures are historic photographs. The after, because of the weather lately, are Google images. So either Google Street View or um, Google Maps that I'm using to sort of pinpoint where that picture is and what it looks like today. So sometimes those images will be a little grainy. Okay, I'll start off with um, a building that's near and dear to my heart. Um, and it's the Oshawa Library, which was at the corner of Athol and Simcoe Street South, uh, just north of where the Simcoe Street United Church is um, today, and it was then. This building was built by an, a grant from Andrew Carnegie, who's an American philanthropist, who gave lots of money to communities to build little libraries all over um, North America. And Whitby still has their Carnegie Library physically. It's a law office now, I believe. But um, our library, unfortunately, was, uh, was built between 1906 and 1909. And uh, once it got to about the 1940s, the building was way too small for the growing city of Oshawa. When it was built, we were a town. When uh, we became a city in 1924, with all the industry in the city, it grew exponentially. And there were tons of appeals in the paper saying we need a bigger library please give us a bigger library and there were lots of different um, appeals to the government funding to build the library and unfortunately it kept being turned down now um carnegie had given them money for this but by the time we needed a new library there were no more carnegie grants so robert mclaughlin uh, robert samuel mclaughlin that's rs uh, of general motors of canada fame and the robert claridge factory um McLaughlin Carriage Factory rather, uh, he gave us a grant to build a library on um, our current site. So this building unfortunately was vacated in the early, uh, in 1954 and uh, when we moved into the new building and then it was torn down. Um, so fortunately today it houses this nondescript building built in about the 1970s, um, just north of where the Simcoe Street United Church is here, which, um, is the oldest church still standing in Oshawa today. This image is from a few months ago when it was still under construction. They were um, working on repairing the spire, which was a large project. Um, so these days, it doesn't have a pretty little library on this corner like it was like this. It now has this building, which has housed a number of different offices and businesses. Now on the same street, this is a Oshawa Railway streetcar um, in the middle of Simcoe Street. Behind you can see on the left the Simcoe Street United Church and the library is actually tucked in behind the streetcar, the library I was just showing you. Um, and today this just shows a different view of it is what it looks like today. Um, so this is a before and after. So the church and the manse, which is the house, you can see the, the gables of it here, are still standing today. Um, but not our little library, unfortunately. So I start off with a little bit of a sad note <laughs> that the library is not, um, is not standing anymore. 
Now, moving into, and I'll be jumping kind of all over the city, most of the photographs from historical collections tend to be taken in the city core because that's where the town formed, where the village formed in the 1850s and then uh, became a village and then became a town, sorry, started as a village, became a town and then became a city. All of them, all this, uh, the buildings sort of formed around the, the four corners as we call them. And a lot of the photographs reflect um, what the business center was at the time. So the Bokley collection of photographs does have a large number of um, images from all over the city, and I couldn't possibly cover all of these in an hour. So I've sort of hand-picked a couple, and I'll be showing you a website where you can go and check out more where I load up um, photographs and their current um, view that you can check out. I'll talk about that at the end of the presentation. So this is Simcoe Street. Uh, looking north. This is a streetcar. As we, in the last photograph, we noticed an Oshawa um, streetcar, railway streetcar going north. This is kind of continuing up the street at the four corners. The building on the right is the uh, Standard Bank of Canada, which was torn down and replaced with uh, the, what was at the time, Canada Trust building. And um, it is now the TD Canada Trust Investments with a uh, yoga studio on the first level. So this building was built in the early um, uh, late 70s, I believe. Um, so the building that was there before was torn down and this was built. Uh, of the four buildings that are at the four corners now, only one of them is, ori is not original, but it is, it's been, it's been there for over a century. Um, and I'll get to looking at that Right now, this building is um, has in the past housed the Royal Bank of Canada many years ago uh, before it moved up the street to a newer building, which I'll show you in a bit. This building still stands. It's the only one that's still in existence. It's housed a jeweler. It's housed sandwich shops and um, banks. And most recently, it's under renovation um, into some other I don't really know what they're going to be putting here, um, but this building here is under construction. It's got um, cladding up in front of it to sort of uh, block out what they're working on under construction. So I think they're renovating the entire building with business below and apartments above. Um, so it's encouraging that this building, um, as old as it is, is being renovated. And I was contacted by the people who are working on it to see if we had any historic photographs of the building, and I gave them this image. Um, I believe, actually, the McLaughlin Gallery gave them this image, which was a nice thing to feature in the building once it's done. Um, I, as I mentioned earlier, um, I'm using a lot of Google Street View images for current images, because these days, <laughs> the weather being what it is, and um, uh, being out in the cold and taking pictures and going all over the city taking current pictures of these areas wasn't possible. Um, so I've used these instead. They're not the greatest quality, unfortunately. And sometimes you get um, traffic in the middle of the image. This is kind of up above looking again, straight up Simcoe Street. There's another streetcar. There's a bit of a theme here, which I didn't intend. <laughs> but um, this is looking, um, the streetcar is turning off of Athol Street onto Simcoe Street going north. And um, most of the buildings in this shot are not there anymore. The building on the far lower right was once um, a livery and then it became um, uh, the, uh, sorry, the, uh, well now is the building stands as the Canada Post building, which is being renovated into a new uh, residential uh, slash uh, commercial building, I think. They're keeping that building. But the one that was there initially um, actually had uh, the uh, granary, sorry, not the granary, the uh, tan, I've lost track what I was, uh, let me see here. Sorry, that was uh, the car, it became the car barns for the, um, for the railway. And uh, further up Simcoe Street, you, the buildings on the right um, going up the street, the one on the corner is no longer there, but the one right beside it is with this uh, little bit of a peak on it, which has come off the building now, they've taken that off, but the building is still there. And the building two or three beside it are also still there and have been uh, renovated and, and repurposed. Further up the street, 
the buildings at the corner, the bank building I just showed you is not there, but the one across, the, sorry, is there, but the one across the street, the Standard Bank is not there anymore. Um, Fazio's uh, restaurant stands on the corner uh, currently now here. So this is the building, uh, the buildings today. Uh, so a lot of the lower lying buildings are the same. You can tell when you're walking downtown Oshawa, some of the facades, you can tell they're a bit older. Um, you can often tell when you're looking at Google images like this, the roofs and, and the, the structure of the buildings kind of uh, give you an idea of their age. The building on the left here, it was the Bank of Montreal building, which was built in the 1960s. Um, it replaced an earlier building. A lot of these buildings on this block on the left hand side of the image burnt in a fire in the in the uh, early 1960s. Um, it's a clothing shop that caught fire and wrecked a lot of buildings. So they ripped all those down on the left side and replaced a lot of them. And uh, yeah, further up the street, you can see uh, the building I was mentioning before, the uh, current TD Canada Trust building and uh, further north of that, uh, other buildings which are newer. Now, this is looking um, Simcoe Street again, it's a theme here, We're kind of focusing on the downtown to start with. Um, this is Simcoe Street, the uh, east side, looking southeast. Um, so this person is crossing the street at Bond. Um, and so we're looking slightly south. So this, brand, this um, to give you some context, this is what's here now. The Royal Bank building, which is being renovated into, I believe, a market. Um, I'm not sure, I think it's open now, but they've renovated that. And so uh, it's been repurposed. Now this building, the Royal Bank building, was built in the 1930s, I believe. Uh, before that, this building was there. Um, it housed a lot of different businesses over the years. At this point, I think it's a market. So the person crossing the street, and you can see the streetcar tracks as he's walking they're under his feet here. This picture is from about the night, uh, 1915 or so. And so that's the current view now. A little further up the street, kind of uh, bird's eye view, we've kind of just moved up into the air and looked down the same angle on the same street. This is Simcoe looking south, east. Um, so the building I was just referencing on the corner of Bond is right in the middle of the photograph and right to the north of it, to the left, is the uh, Queen's Hotel, which stood on this site um, until uh, it was renovated actually in the 1920s. So it was built in the 1870s, renovated in the 1920s to have apartments above and shops below. Uh, but then the building burned um, in the 19, uh, mid 1980s. And currently it is, and has been since then, an empty lot, it's used for parking, which I think is just heartbreaking <laughs> that a beautiful building like that, um, the Queen's Hotel, uh, very grand hotel, um, was lost to fire. Um, it wasn't a hotel at the time it burned, it was an apartment block by that point. Um, but unfortunately, it's just a parking lot now and nothing. It's right beside the armory to give you some context. A little further up the street, this is actually looking along, uh, this would be Richmond Street. So Simcoe Street is the street going uh, left to right across the bottom of the photograph. The newer Queen's Hotel, which is a block north of where the old one was. This was called the Queen's Hotel. So then if there, those of you that have been in Oshawa for a length of time will know uh, this, this hotel. It was named the Queen's after the other one closed. Um, and it was a little less grand, um, known as a local watering hole uh, and small hotel, kind of infamous in an Oshawa area, I think, <laughs> for some people. Um, and I think uh, the building across the street from it from that hotel. The hotel is no longer there. It's been knocked down and currently occupied by um, a Holiday Inn <laughs> is what's on that site. Uh, but the building across the street is still there. It's housed, I believe, uh, cleaners for many years. 
but I wanted to show you, this is the building in the distance. This was uh, General Motors, actually, initially it was the carriage factory, and then uh, which burned down and they rebuilt it in 1899 after it burned. And it was the carriage factory, which became, of course, General Motors of Canada, the North Plant. Um, that's in the distance here. Now, this picture was taken in 1974 um, with the Queen's Hotel and the General Motors in the back. But in, by 1976, they'd ripped down those buildings and they were starting to build, this is under construction, the McLaughlin condominiums in their place, right on the same footprint where the previous building was. But you can tell that the, the hotel hasn't moved. The hotel is still there. It gives you context of what was there from two years, uh, from 1974, this is 1976. And then um, today, the towers are here, uh, still uh, condominiums. Um, and not much has changed in this area, except for this lot, which was the hotel, and a par large parking lot is now um, a much larger hotel. This is moving along King Street to the west of the Four Corners, looking north. The large building we see in the middle of the photograph, large long building, this was the uh, Williams Piano Factory um, along Richmond Street. And you can see also this other very odd shaped uh, tall building just across the street. Uh, on the left hand side here from the piano factory is Hogg and Little, which was a, a grain um, grain company. And the, this is a grain uh, elevator that was across the street there. Now the streets, the houses across the street, right in the front and the lower le on the lower part of the photograph are all no, no longer there. These were all businesses. Um, actually, initially the one on the corner was a home and it became a business. Uh, these were eventually torn down and the building across the street from it, the Oshawa House, which still stands today, uh, most likely the oldest building in Oshawa still standing, um, is the Oshawa House Hotel. So you can see it here on the corner in the bottom left, the Oshawa House, House Hotel. They've actually opened a cafe in there and called it Oshawa House, fittingly. Oshawa House was a hotel and a um, residence for many years. Um, and it's been renovated many times. There's always been different businesses in the lower level. Now, of course, the monolith that takes up most of this photograph is the Michael Starr building and across the street, another office tower. Now the office tower across the street from Michael Starr, I forget the name of it, I don't recall. Um, it was built um, just in the 18, uh, late 1960s. And the Michael Starr building was built in 1983. So it took up, it takes up the whole view of this uh, particular street. So you can see the before picture, these little row of, of businesses and it uh, going forward, you'll notice that as cities get bigger, the taller the buildings get. So Michael Starr building is this giant building right in the middle of the city, you can't quite miss it. So I couldn't get a, a view of the businesses along the street because of course this has been the way. Now you can see as well at Center Street coming down, this was known as Church street initially because there were lots of churches on this street and um initially it was center street actually it was center street uh changed to center street later on it was once center street to one side to the north and uh, church street to the south actually the reverse sorry center street to the um south and church street to the north but uh you can see how it bends and you've noticed this if you've driven down center street before it bends towards the bottom of the photograph because they were two separate streets that they merged together. Um, and so you have to kind of jog a little bit to the left when you're going by the Michael Starr building. Now this is in the same area um, looking towards City Hall. Now City Hall is across the street from Michael Starr building. Um, this was the City Hall as it existed in 1967. Um, and you can see on the bottom right, there is the um, Oshawa Library, where I normally work, um, along the bottom there to the right, St. George's Church uh, on the street across. So that sits at the corner of Center and Bagot Streets, St. George's Anglican Church. And um, the City Hall at the time was this tower. Now this tower remained up until about, I think it was 10 or 12 years ago when it came down. On the same side of the street here, this is 
one of the reasons why it was called Church Street. You had St. George's Church, but then you also had Center Street United, which would have been right across the street from Michael Starr Building. So all of the buildings you see across from the church, those were all, um, at least that large block was torn down um, over time to make way for the Michael Starr Federal Building. Now you'll notice as well that uh, the uh, Athol Street, which comes across here uh, in between, um, just to the south of the church, it was a through street all the way over to Queen Street. It went all the way through um, and when they built the new city hall, Rundle Tower, they closed off Athol Street and now it terminates in front of City Hall. And then you can see here Michael Starr Building, City Hall, which is the Rundle Tower. Um, and the other little building behind City Hall is the Arts Resource Center. It once was um, a jail. Um, so this little building here on the far left, in the middle of the photograph there, is, uh, was the uh, jail police station and jail. And now it's just called the Arts Resource Center where they hold different um, artistic programs in the city. Okay. I think you will also notice at the bottom of this photograph, there are houses along the bottom of Queen Street, which is at the terminus of um, Bagot Street, it goes right by the library. There were houses here. Those were torn down and now the Robert McLaughlin Gallery sits on that spot, which you can see here, this large uh, white building at the bottom of the photograph. Again, the same area looking to a different direction. You can see here clearly the um, center street and how it bends. Um, Again, this is going back a little bit. This is before Michael Starr was built, but after Rundle Tower. So this places it um, after 1973, I believe it went up, Rundle Tower. I think I'm wrong with that date. It was in the 70s anyway. Um, and across the street would have been Michael Starr, which went up in 83. So you can date this photograph to between those dates. Um, as well, you can see the parking garage across the street, but that office tower and Michael Starr building that sit on these two sides of the street are not there at this time. Now, Center Street, you can see where it bends here. So these were two separate streets south of, uh, this is King Street running along the uh, top part of the photograph. And the library on the bottom left, this is before we renovated and added a whole new wing on the back in 1978. Um, so it's a lot smaller at this point. So you can tell that this actually is, uh, so it's well before 83, it's well before 1978 as well to help date the photograph again. So it's so usually a little trick. The bottom right, you see Simcoe Street United Church, um, built in 1863 in the oldest standing church in the city. And this is the same view now, just a Google Street view, so it's quite grainy. Um, you can see both churches, as I mentioned, there's the giant Michael Starr, the white, uh, kind of like an iceberg, I think, is what I had it described at when it was built, and what I think is pretty appropriate. <laughs> and there's Rundle Tower again, and um, the library to the bottom left there. Now, of course, the history of Oshawa would be nothing if we didn't talk somewhat about General Motors. This is um, a photograph of the North Plant running uh, east to west along um, William and Richmond Streets. And you can see the Janosch Hotel is the white building in the lower middle of the photograph. Um, and so that is still standing. And across the street from it was a church, which was the Emmanuel uh, First Baptist Church, which no longer stands there today. Um, and I'll show that one in a little more detail. But you can see here the size, the sheer scope of this um, enterprise, General Motors took up um, entire street blocks of the city blocks of uh, both sides, uh, sorry, this side of Simcoe Street, this is Mary Street actually, Mary Street between Mary and Division, and as well Division Street, the North Plant is stretched all the way up where the Costco, uh, Costco Plaza is now. 
So you can kind of get a view of that. And here's the uh, infamous uh, smokestacks, which were torn down. All these buildings now um, are no longer there. They were ripped down and are being gradually built upon. Um, in this case, um, the Costco Plaza along, uh, this is Division Street and, and Ritson to the, uh, to the north, to, sorry, the east of that on the right side. And then you've got the um, courthouse, the giant courthouse that was built a number of years ago. And they're putting in lots of condominiums. The YMCA was put here and they're building lots of other things in this area. So um, still very, um, you can still see the footprint of where GM kind of laid its claim um, to this space. Now, this is looking at the General Motors nor uh, North plant from a different angle. We're looking towards the east in this case. Um, and along the middle of the photograph, you see the North GM plant and right north of the of all these buildings, that's Ritson Road going right across the middle of the photograph, kind of upwards to the right. And um, then you can see the smokestacks in the middle of the photograph kind of to the middle right of the photograph here. And that's the plant we just looked at from the other angle. And you can see all these new houses that are starting to pop up here and there. This is from the 1960s, uh, early 60s, and um, all sorts of little developments. You can see the little um, kind of grid pattern of all the houses going up. This is it today. Now you'll notice in the earlier photograph, there were all lots of new developments because you couldn't see a lot of trees. Um, was kind of very bare and all these trees have kind of grown up now and sort of lots more greenery in the space but again the, the Costco Plaza here Division Street running just below it and Ritson on the other side um, and you can kind of see the the outline of where these uh, the GM buildings would have been a lot of the homes in this area um, are still standing and um, kind of original to this space they haven't ripped a lot of those down now, this is a kind of an interesting photograph taken from the Robert McLaughlin Gallery's Folkley photographs. This is um, looking back towards the GM plant from the east, looking towards Oshawa. And the street on the bottom right is Ritson, uh, sorry, Wilson Road, where there's just one little house, two little houses in the bottom right corner of this photograph. These um, sort of new developments kind of go, being put up in here and some older homes as well. Um, so this area is completely developed now, but at this point in the uh, early 50s, these were just be starting to be built. Um, you don't see, there's a lot of strip malls along this area now, um, just past Wilson. So just, just to the right of where this photograph is are a lot of strip malls now. Um, but this is all residential between Ritson and Wilson. Oh, this is King Street running through the middle of the photograph. Um, a lot of the older homes um, on King Street now would be in this photograph and then they're mixed in with other uh, more recent uh, houses. Um, so you can see as well General Motors, this giant monolith in the middle of the uh, upper uh, part of the photograph here. Now today it's kind of exploded and lots of trees and um, this is again a Google uh, image map so you can it's easier if you can look at the screen um, for the map when you're actually browsing the map rather than just taking a screenshot with which this is. Um, you can see that this is King Street running through the middle of the photograph down towards the right and Ritz Wilson Road I've put just in the bottom corner as it was in the other photograph, um, roughly the same angle. Um, and now instead of General Motors, you just see um, the uh, Costco Plaza in the distance and the little bit of the courthouse on the right hand side. So lots of little residential streets here which grew up from bare nothing in this area to being quite well built up today. The hospital. Um, now the hospital grew from when it was first built in 1910 to be quite large by this time this photograph was taken in the 1950s um, and very few of the buildings still stand, um, or they've been renovated or torn down and, and replaced with newer things. Um, Parkwood is just to the south of it, um, Parkwood and its gardens, and just to the north of it is Alexander Park, um, which is still there. They haven't um, changed that. Now the building in the middle far right 
is um, McLaughlin Hall. This is still there. Um, it's used for offices now, I believe. If you look at the current photograph, that building is kind of still there. You can see it's the entrance to um, the new entrance to the building. The entrance used to be on the south side of the building, um, off of what I believe is Alma Street. And now you have to go in a hospital court, which is this uh, the street to the north now. Um, and the building right on the corner of Simcoe and Hospital Court is that McLaughlin Hall building. Now, a lot of the buildings, it has some of the same shape. If you look, it's sort of taking up the same sort of square footage, but the buildings themselves have changed over time. Um, and it's become, I think, quite a few, um, taking up a larger, a little bit of a larger footprint. And the street no longer goes all the way through. It used to go all the way through. Alma Street used to go by the hospital and meet up with Gulf Street um, over on the um, west side here on the left of the photograph. It no longer does. It um, terminates in a parking garage um, and you can't drive all the way through there anymore. And this is the airport, um, the Oshawa Airport from about the 19, um, this is I think 1965 and um, you can see that there isn't all that built up. I think we said this was from the 19, uh, yeah, 65 because there's an apartment building. Um, this is Stevenson Road, which is the street coming up the middle of the photograph pointing towards the airport. Um, and this was the Oshawa Catholic High School um, on the right side here, uh, sorry, left side of Stevenson and then apartment building here as well, which still stands. And the airport pretty much takes up the same footprint, but everything around it is kind of changed. So to the north, of course, you have, um, there's a clinic and the Mandarin there, and you've got like a lot of different other um, buildings um, around. And a lot of the developments have built up here, residential on the far left of the photograph. And a lot of them have filled in more um, just south of the airport as well. Now, Oshawa's um, infamous, not infamous, I guess, famous um, theater that was built and is still standing, thankfully, rescued by the um, Ontario Tech University, converted into a lecture hall. It is now uh, fully renovated and um, gone back to a lot of its original um, the original layout as a theater. In the past, it's been um, throughout the 70s and 80s, it was sort of a nightclub. Uh, it was a theater actually in the mid 80s, sorry, and it became a nightclub in the 90s. And they painted it a really ugly blue color. And um, it was uh, bought by the university and renovated. Um, so thankfully, it's been rescued. You will see also um, the Janosh Hotel, which I'll be showing in a little bit. Um, but it's 70 King. That's also another building that is still standing from its original. It was built in 1929. The Regent was built in 1930, I believe. And um, they are both been um, saved by developers. One that's in between those two buildings um, no longer stands. Now this is the Oshawa Post Office, which had, um, was demolished, um, I believe it was in the 1950s, um, it came down and has been replaced by just an office, uh, small little um, retail uh, business and offices above. Um, this is at the corner of Victoria, sorry, on, it's Ontario Street and um, King Street. And there have been other buildings that have popped up around it, but unfortunately this was not rescued. And there's a clock tower there too. It was just to the, um, just off the right of this photograph is where the Regent Theater sat next to it. Sorry, and I see quite a few photograph uh, questions coming up in the chat and I haven't had time to sort of take a look at them, unfortunately. I've uh, got a smaller screen that I'm working at here. So I will read through some of those at the end of the presentation. Unfortunately, it looks like it's not, um, they don't pop up for me when I'm presenting. I have to go hunting for them. So apologies for that. Um, 
someone said they are so pleased that the uh, sorry they're so pleased the Regent Theatre is still there and that's true it's it's been rescued and it's very fortunate that Oshawa is now I think turned a corner with maybe rescuing more buildings um, or at least developers are, are taking on the uh, the challenge of renovating them a building that was uh, this is the Boresbury home uh, which was um, on the site where the Janosh Hotel now sits. So this is uh, sitting on King Street and Mary Street is just to the right of it. Um, and this was torn down to make way, of course, for the Janosh Hotel. This is another angle of the same house. And during a, there's a little parade here with uh, both buggies and with cars. Um, this was taken from the, the Art Robert Blotham Gallery and showing um, people kind of gathered and watching a parade go by. And then this is what it is today. So that same view, this is where these cars would have been turning off of Mary Street onto King Street. Now the Janosh Hotel, which has been quite nicely restored in recent years. There was a lot of dec quite a few decades there. We weren't sure what was going to happen with it. And it has now, um, the university did have it for a while and we're going to I think make it into a residence of some kind, but that didn't work out. So another developer took it on and now it is residences, which is encouraging to see. Sorry, here. I'm getting near the end and then I'm gonna go back and answer your questions and I can scroll through the photographs as well. Uh, this is actually St. Joseph's Convent um, which was on Simcoe Street, just north of Brock Street. Um, and it actually, right now, the site is kind of, well, there's an office there, it's a dental office. And this is where Simcoe Street bends and, and meets up with, to become Center Street for the southbound lanes of Simcoe Street. So this is where this used to sit, and it was, um, it was torn down later on, this, um, this older building here. Um, it was also affiliated with St. Joseph's Convent was affiliated with the Catholic Church, which of course is on the same block just up the street. Now this is the first Baptist church, all later called Emmanuel Church, which sat roughly across from where the Janosh Hotel is now. Um, but because um, it sat at the corner of King Street West, sorry, King Street East and what they called Prospect Street at the time, which is now called Mary Street. Um, it, those two streets, Mary and Prospect, didn't quite match up. And again, there was a little bit of a uh, turn. You can see the car going by on the bottom. It's going um, right through where Mary Street is meeting up with, in front of the church. And Prospect Street is off the building to the left and you see parked cars on it. Um, later on, these streets were joined, and now where the church sat is roughly kind of halfway in the intersection and halfway um, where the wing shop is now on the corner. So it wasn't directly across from Janosh, it was almost half into this intersection. But because Prospect Street was widened and joined up with Mary, that building was lost. And this is the uh, Warren Mill, the old mill, which sat just to the west of downtown, right by the Oshawa Creek. So we're looking towards downtown here and um, kind of a little bit out of town, even though it's only about a five minute walk to the west. Um, and this was owned by J.B. Warren, um, the Warren Mill. And today it's occupied by a parking garage. This area is the beginning of what's known as the hollow. So past the parking garage, going um, over our left shoulder and turning to the left would be leading down and towards the hollow, which is an area kind of dips down um, after you go past the creek and um, on your way over to um, Park Road. I mentioned the piano factory. This is a more detailed photograph of it. This is along Richmond Street looking towards the east and it is um, no longer there. Anyone who lives in Oshawa now would know that it's it's not there any longer. In the past, it's housed, um, once it was uh, torn down, it uh, occupied a space for the Oshawa Times used to be in this spot um, in one of the buildings halfway up the block and the police station occupies the corner um, leading towards, um, sorry, the corner of Center Street and Richmond Street and taking up the whole the whole end of the block there. 
So um, uh, you'll see a lot of these older factory buildings just did not survive. And you imagine if, if something like this had survived, what would they have used it for? They weren't really repurposing things back then. Um, it just sort of um, didn't serve a purpose anymore. The factory went out of business. Um, and so it was torn down and other things were built in their place. Oftentimes we talk about buildings of the past being so much more beautiful than kind of blocks of buildings that we have today. And you can tell when a city is kind of grown up um, you can see that these giant blocks and office towers, which have a lot less character, I find, but um, that seems to be at least the way of the 80s and 90s was to build those uh, kind of ugly boxes. Um, and hopefully we're <laughs> doing a little bit more restoration these days. This is the Hog and Little Grain Elevator I mentioned in a little more detail. It actually sat just north of Bond and Center Street. Um, just to the north of it um, would, would have been Richmond Street running, but um, we're looking at it from standing on Bond Street, looking north up center, um, kind of uh, this way. So there's an office, kind of a uh, ugly office tower here in the place of the block, which was just beside where the grain elevator would have been. It, the elevator would have been just north of where this building ends here. Um, and to the other side of the street is the, um, what was known as the Bond Towers, now renovated into condominiums. Now, this is Schofield Woolen Mill, which is, uh, did occupy a site on Center Street South, um, but it did have a fire and um, was never rebuilt. And the site remained empty for a lot of years. And more recently, now this is Center Street South today. This is the terminus of Center Street. So after it passes where Center Street bends back towards Simcoe Street, and you continue on Center Street after that bend, this is where you end up down in a new housing development down in this area here. So they're using that land now. It hadn't been used for quite a long time. And of course, the McLaughlin Library. Um, this building was built in 1954. It still stands today, so it's 66 years old right now. Um, and we um, will hit, reach 67 years later this year. Um, it was built with funds from RS McLaughlin, as I mentioned, and it's been expanded three separate times and renovated multiple times in between that. Um, currently, it's, uh, it sits on the same site and uh, there are no plans to expand it at any time in the future that I know of, but um, we'd be so thankful once we we're able to open up again to the public because this large building right now is um, occupied only by staff for the flat past month or so um, just doing takeout service. So we're hoping to get people into the building yet again. Okay, now I'm just going to go through and read some of the chat and go back over some of the, if you wanted to open your microphone, you can ask me questions in person as well, but I'm going to go back over the chat now um, because I missed a lot of those comments that as they were coming in. Unfortunately, I actually have a vision impairment, so it's hard for me sometimes to read the smaller type. Um, so I'm just going to go back to the, the beginning here and see if anybody had any comments that they'd like to Okay, so has anybody had any comments? Did you have a question? Sorry, I thought I heard someone um, commenting. Yeah, I believe you can turn off your uh, turn your microphone on if you'd like. Um, let me just check here. I'm just going to bring up the chat box on my screen here so I can read it. So there was a correction to um, oh we're talking about the building where the old library was located. Um, it was replaced in the 1950s by a low um, bylaw enforcement division of Oshawa. The building housed then the Imperial Bank of Canada. I think is what the the comment was. Thanks for that, John. Um, Oh, they put, uh, Imperial Bank put a huge gold colored logo on the east side of the building. 
um, the Bank of Commerce was built in 1960, um, with Bank of Commerce in 61. Hmm. Yeah, they merged in 1961 to become the Imperial Bank, Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce. Right. CIBC occupied that site for a brief time before they took over the Burns Shoe mm -hmm. Store site and erected that huge brown building. Right. I know the Burns Shoe, which I didn't get into because you can't cover everything, is where it used to be, the CIBC was the Burns Shoe Building. And they, it was built with three stories and then they built a fourth story and then they found it wasn't to code and it was dangerous. So they had to take down the fourth story of the building. <laughs> um, and then eventually they ripped it down in... Um, I believe it was the late 70s and they uh, built the current brown building um, someone mentioned they gave me a correction to the building across from michael star building is called the uh, phi beta building so thank you for that i've never known the name of that building so <laughs> uh go to the entrance go to the entrance of the building on um, the uh, south side where you have the stairs going up into the entrance mm -hmm. uh, there's a logo there on the um Okay. On the cement uh, stanchion between the two steps. Right. And you'll see the symbols Phi Beta. Mm -hmm. I need to go walking around a little bit more. <laughs> yeah. And um, interesting history of that building. Uh, Prince Street used to go all the way through. And right. you, had, you had the old bus terminal on the um, northeast uh, corner of uh, Prince Street, plus the old um, stamp and coin shop uh, near the uh, bus terminal. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I heard, I knew that Prince Street used to go all the way through um, and then they closed it off when they built the bus station. So now you just, there's a bit of a tunnel so people can walk through, but there's no, uh, no through street. Yeah. I think um, Margaret mentioned something about they had a business in the basement. I'm not sure of which building she's talking about. Um, I just didn't read the whole thing here. <laughs> Oh, here she goes. Here, um, it says, uh, we had a business in the basement of a building. Oops, I've lost my. Of a building that was demolished for the Michael Starr building, 1979 to 1982. And also on the site where the Michael Starr building now sits was the Lancaster Hotel. Um, and a number of, like a restaurant was on that site as well as I think a lumber. No, the lumber place was across the street. Um, yeah, but there's there's been a lot of changes in that area. Yeah, the lumber the lumber place was in the former um, Center Street United Church site, and uh, I remember up until 1965 that a train uh, ran into that um, um, lumber place, and I remember my father coming over to Oshawa to get uh, lumber for a uh, contracting business. Oh, uh, really? Lumber place, yeah. Yeah. And um, the, Mm -hmm. the building that she's talking about um, was a, is across from what the Phi Beta building site. Um, it was a brown building. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, there's a question here. Does anyone know why they stopped using the North plant? Now, I know um, they, they changed production, I think, with General Motors. Now, the plant itself wasn't torn down right away. It was occupied by Paragon, and I forget who had it before that. Um, Paragon? Uh, yeah. Paragon Corporation from the United States. Yeah, but does anyone know why they shut the North, like why GM stopped producing in the North plant? Oh, the building was uh, unstructurally uh, sound and they mm -hmm. had to upgrade the building and it would have cost too much money. Plus um, they um, were wanting to center most of the uh, production in the South plant was, uh, got that reliable source from my uncles who used to work uh, for General Motors. Great. Yeah. I have to put you on retainer, John. You're like my local historian <laughs> for things. I was, uh, I, I was born in Oshawa and raised in Whippy, but uh, we used to come yeah. over to Oshawa all the time uh, right. to do all sorts of stuff. Yeah, um, I think uh, Terry had written the main operations moved from um, to the new South plant in the late 1950s. So yeah. there's an answer. Yep, and they kept the uh, headquarters at the old, old building um, on uh, Ritson Road there, which uh, right. stayed in operation right up until I uh, came to Osh came back to Oshawa back in uh, 1990. Right. Okay, lots of comments on that particular one. And then the comments about the Regent Theater. There's another question here. Um, what has been done 
with um, all the debris <laughs> from buildings knocked down. <laughs> um, it depends what the building was. I know that when they were knocking down this, the GM buildings, like, there's a reason why that land stayed dormant for so many years. Because whenever there's a factory on land, like, I mean, they have to um, think, take out some of the soil or it has to uh, be treated or, you know, taken out because you can't build on it, I think, with uh, depending on what was produced there. But anything else being torn down, you wonder what they did with it all, right? Repurposed or um, it's an interesting question. I, I've never worked in construction and, and, and demolition, so I don't quite know what would have been done with all of that wasn't just about General Motors being torn down, like other buildings when they, you know, need to be uh, demolished. Hmm. Oh, Margaret wrote back, she had, a, it was a taxi firm, I guess, that was uh, on the site for the, um, where the Michael Starr building is now. Oops. Just stopping my sheen screen sharing now. And uh, if there's any other questions that people had, I was just going with, that was all the questions in the chat anyway. So now I know that I was gonna show something else actually. I mentioned that there's a, um, a website that I've been using to um, to allow people to browse our photograph collection and also see what um, what it looks like now, because I couldn't do all of them on here, obviously. So what I can do here is I'm gonna show you instead this particular website, which is, oops, not that website, this website. Here we go. Um, so you see Oshawa Street Scenes there. Um, this is a website called History Pin. So it's historypin.com. Um, but I'll put uh, the address in the chat. It is a place where you can, I've loaded up old photographs and you can do a Google Street View. So it comes up with um, an image with the old image overlaid on top of the Street View. And then it's got a little toggle or a slider here. You can slide over and see the current photograph and then overlaid the um, the old photograph there. So you can see it a little better on your own screen. It, it's sort of, it's a bit small here for me to be able to show. But it, it, it's a neat, a neat tool for us to use to give people an idea of where photographs used to be. History pin. And you can just search for, a, on the history pin website, you can just search for Oshawa. It's called, my, my collection is called Oshawa Street Scenes. Um, and then you can browse through the different photographs. So for example, here's one that I didn't cover today. This is uh, Bond and Simcoe, it's looking south. So you can see if I scroll over here, it's now, you can see this is Simcoe Street looking south. And some of those buildings are actually still there. So that's an interesting way to sort of browse collections that way. And I haven't added a whole lot in here yet. There's about 80 or 90 so far. This is the Oshawa house I mentioned before. Old Oshawa House Hotel, that's now what it looks like today. I'm not getting anything. You're not getting anything? Nope. Uh, standard. You, still have, you still have your standard bank screen up on the... On the oh, do uh, I really? Oh, my goodness. My standard bank screen. What's that? Yeah. Ah. Now you got the parade. Now I got the parade. Okay, I'll move this over then. I was sharing my screen and it moved. I have two screens that I use, so... This has been great. I have to leave now. Okay. Thanks, John. Yep. Can we see this now? Is that Margaret? Yes. Can you see that now? <laughs> These are the images now. Sorry, I had two screens going and one closed off on me. Um, so this is the Oshawa House Hotel. And you can, at the top, you can kind of drag over and see what it looks like today. So this is a tool kind of looking at using to be able to rather than having just a static image on our image site people could also come on here and do a browse to see what it looks like today so this would have been general motors um 
along William Street. And then if you scroll over now today, it's the McLaughlin condos taking up the same footprint there, looking west. So um, if you'd like, put that in the chat. That's actually a, um, got the address here, but you can just do a Google search for, it's a really long link for my direct collection I put in the chat. But you can just do a Google search for history pin. That's H I S T O R Y P I N, history pin. And um, then just do a search for locations. Now, other collections exist. Like you could browse other cities, see what other people have posted. Um, I just decided to use this tool. Here's another view of that Warren Mill that I mentioned before. And the parking garage, which is oh so attractive. <laughs> This parking garage incidentally went up because of the Michael Starr building. They needed place for the federal employees to, to park. Sorry. Someone asked where the microphone is. In Zoom, if you hover around the bottom, there should be a little microphone that pops up. You're able to turn your microphone on. If you're on a tablet, it might be a little different than if you're on a... Um, if you're on a PC. I have, a, I have an iPad. It's, it's in the top right corner. Top right corner. Thank you. Terry, did you have a question? Are you able to turn your microphone on? No? <laughs> what you can also do is contact me at the library. Um, you can just call the library and ask for Nicole, or you can email me. Um, I've... Um, See here, I'll put my email address in the chat. Oops, I'm giving you my personal one, not my work one. <laughs> Here's my email address. <laughs> Sorry, Terry's still looking for the microphone. <laughs> but, um, you can always send me an email after if you have a question, um, if you can't get the, the microphone to work. Um, I'll also be, like I say, I've recorded this this evening, um, but if you have any other questions, you can always forward them on to me. Okay, I think that might be everything today, <laughs> but um, I think we're just coming on just after seven o'clock now. So um, let me see here. Another question, um, ex-counselor Kathy Clark has a petition going around for the RS McLaughlin House um, looking for 2,500, sorry, 20, she has 2,250, 2,500 uh, signatures so far, um, trying to decide whether that house is going to be uh, demolished or not. If anyone's not familiar with that history, it's the, the house that sits just um, at the corner of Elgin and Simcoe Street North, um, which was damaged by fire over a year ago. And the developer has pretty much been now abandoning it and letting it, it's like demolition by decay, I think. And he's applied for a permit to have it torn down because it's derelict now, but he's the one that's let it get that way. Um, it was that way before it went, um, before it caught fire. Um, so he wants to rip it down in another house beside it and uh, probably put in, I don't know if condominium units or, um, apartment building or something like that. So there's a petition out now um, to block that from happening. And I believe there's information on the city website about that. Um, but ex this person in the chat says that um, ex councillor Kathy Clark has a petition going. It's kind of sad that they're tearing the, the house gets torn down. It is sad too that it was abandoned for so many years. Even before this developer had it, it kind of was let to um, fall into disrepair. The thing is with heritage buildings, like if they're not kept up, they do become very costly to keep um, or to renovate. And if, they, if they've been allowed to get too far gone, it's, it's really challenging to find a developer who's willing to do something with them. Um, it is, um, and it wasn't um, R.S. McLaughlin's house, it was his father's house, Robert McLaughlin, who did serve for a period of time, a short period of time as mayor of Oshawa. So it's, it's an important part of our history and it's, uh, it's a shame really. 
Um, unfortunately, you can't really save everything, but in this case, it seems to be a quite shameless from this developer who isn't from here, kind of came from out of town, um, bought the building and then wanted to knock it down. And he, he met with a lot of resistance um, and then now magically it's sort of, he has a reason to tear it down. Yeah, very expensive to uh, to fix things up. So I'm, I don't have, um, like I said, I didn't focus on all of the photographs today. I could only focus on a few. Um, but if ever you're curious as well as using my history pin site, but even just using Google Street View, you go to Google and, and search an address and then you can look at Google Maps and browse around and, and see what buildings look like now and what they're doing because they update the images quite often. Um, or even if you're looking at when I'm doing historical research on another city um, or my family who lived in another place, I like to see if the house that they lived in in 1925 is still standing in that city. So it's kind of interesting to, to consider and to look at. Uh, the pictures of the, uh, the North GM plant, the, one I, the ones I showed, they are available online. You might want to try the Robert McLaughlin Gallery. Um, that's where I found most of the photographs. It is the Robert McLaughlin Gallery. I don't think I have the um, here for me for some reason. Um, but just send me an email and I can send that link to you. But just to do a Google search for Robert McLaughlin Gallery, and then they have their, their uh, virtual collections. It's called the Thomas Boakley Collection, and they have, they're not all online, but the ones I used are because I borrowed them from them um, that way. Uh, okay, so that's everything I've got for today, and I'll hopefully hear from you if you have any questions. Thanks, everybody.